Hotep, I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore, Peace host and producer of OmniU Presents, the H3O Art of Life show. The title of this show is Black Political Empowerment, a Reality Check. And who could I get in this studio to do a better job of checking on the reality of black political empowerment than Professor Robert Starks, Professor of Political Science at the Northeastern Illinois University Center. Well, actually, it's the Carruthers Center for Inner City Studies, named after the late priest Jacob H. Carruthers. And of course, my old dear friend and colleague and everything else, this is Timuel Black, whose face is familiar to everybody. He's been awarded everything that anybody can <laughs> award. The last thing I think I heard about was the history makers. No, that may not be the last thing. No, no, the no. Black United Fund hey, was yeah. your last award. You Do you have a room in your house where you put all these trophies? <laughs> That's what my wife was worried about, <laughs> having some space to sit down. I know. <laughs> but much of it's been transferred to the Vivian Harsh archives collection. And in, in the uh, library, the regional library at 95th and Halstead? Yeah, at the Carter G. Woodson. The library. Carter G. Woodson, yeah. a special yeah. section named after the first African-American librarian in the city, Vivian Harsh, mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. was the uh, first librarian at the uh, 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 George Cleveland Hall Library on 48th mm -hmm, Street. Mm -hmm. and, Followed uh, by Charlie Mae Rollins, Rollins. Yeah, who Ms. was Rollins. my uh, librarian as a child in, exactly. in grammar school, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful to be able to know your librarian on a personal level, you know, and have and know what the librarian is doing that is helping you. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, a, it was a very important meeting place Mm -hmm. for many of the intellectuals mm -hmm. across the country. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois and uh, uh, poet Lang Langston Hughes, mm -hmm. uh, the photographer, the great black photographer, I forget his name right off. It was an organizing Gordon place. Gordon Parks. Yeah, Gordon Park. We would meet, we youngsters would come to the library just to have an opportunity to see these famous people who mm -hmm. are already famous mm -hmm. and were activists, mm -hmm. and particularly during the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. They were activists, activists. That's mm -hmm. reading the, the uh, uh, Roosevelt uh, Good New Deal mm -hmm. did a lot to soften the anger at the United States of America over mm -hmm. unemployment and other factors. What grade school did you go to, Tim, in high school? Well, I, you know, we, we, the black community was very mobile in those days because mm -hmm. we were so cramped. Mm -hmm. So I started at Fulham. Okay. At Fulham. Then I went to Forestville. Mm -hmm. And Forestville was overcrowded, so we moved and I went to Willard. I went to Willard. And it was overcrowded. Mm -hmm. So then the blacks jumped across what was then Grand Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And we moved to 50th and Calumet. And I went to Edmund Burke. Okay. By that time, I was in second grade. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three schools later, okay. I was in second grade. Okay. And that's where I met uh, a lot of uh, important people who became Im very important, like Bill Green, mm -hmm. who was the first black internal revenue agent mm -hmm. in the country, uh, and Charles White. The great artist, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and on and on. Uh, uh, okay. we had, uh, I In your was, high school, was it Wendell Phillips? Well, I went to Inglewood first. At, at Burke, we still had some whites, so we had a choice. Uh, they, I mean, the choice was there to go to Phillips, uh, Inglewood, or Hyde Park. You had that choice? We had that choice, because okay. there were still whites there. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. wanted to give them the opportunity to go to Hyde Park, really. Okay. Well, I went to Inglewood, and I was... Uh, there, and the uh, class thing entered, entered the game. Mm -hmm. Although the white kids who went to Inglewood came from blue blue collar backgrounds, like mm -hmm. Daly's neighborhood, mm -hmm. who should have been going to Phillips, mm -hmm. they would ask the black kids, where did their father work? Well, most of the black kids that I grew up with at Brown Burke, their parents, if they were working, were either white collar Mm -hmm. or professional. Mm -hmm. My dad worked in stockyards. Mm -hmm. So when I would answer the, the question, people would put their no hands up to their nose. Mm -hmm. the 
So I began to hang out with the wrong people. Okay. Uh, Fifth Day Street gang guys. Okay. And, uh, and uh, now these were not poor guys, but they were just tough guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Red Fox was a part of that, <laughs> that group. Good and uh, they called me Cutting Class, and I gave my right name. Then the uh, uh, assistant principal, who was a, who was a bigot, uh, he was going to tell my daddy, my father, who was a tough little guy, he was going to tell my daddy how to punish me. And my father said, this is in the 30s, mm -hmm. I pay your salary. Mm -hmm. You don't pay mine. Now, you're not going to tell me how to treat my children. I knew I was going to get a spanking when I got home, mm -hmm. but that wasn't his business. Mm -hmm. So then I decided uh, to have me to transfer. Okay. And I forged my mama's name and went to Phillips. Oh my god. She was she was angry because <laughs> she was class oriented. Okay. You don't say the class differentiation. Right, right. And, and that's what right. we, we're dealing with now okay. as we get into this political uh, arena more more more. Well national. let's let's open this, I, I, Bob. I'm gonna ask Tim, when did you meet Anna Langford? Because Anna went to Hyde Park. She went to Hyde Park. Right. But she was in that sort of elitist mm -hmm. social group, mm -hmm. which my brother was a part of. Okay. okay. See, I, I've okay. switched ba backward and forward. <laughs> I could go. My brother couldn't go with the tough guys. He didn't know how to handle that. Mm -hmm. But he hung out with the Anna Langfords mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, of that whole mm -hmm. that whole mm -hmm. social elitist mm -hmm. group. They they were. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they were prepared to move into the mainstream mm -hmm. socially as well as academically. Mm -hmm. And um, so we all lived in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, go to Hyde Park. Usually, you'd wind up living in the Grand Boulevard section. That's the oh, area. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just wet, just east of what is now Martin Luther King mm -hmm. Drive, mm -hmm. or you would be living in Woodlawn. Right. That patch right. of Woodlawn where right. blacks lived mm -hmm. before the Hansberry decision. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, I knew all those people. I didn't hang out with them too much. I might go to a farm and put on my tux and my tail and play <laughs> like I was, you know. One of them. A whisper to a little girl, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if we, don't, if we don't get started on this black political <laughs> empowerment yeah. piece in a minute, because you are just a treasure trove <laughs> of all the most wonderful anecdotes. Uh, but it, the point is, I'm saying all that to give our viewers. Mm -hmm a idea of the social composition of that community that laid the groundwork mm -hmm. for what the political groundwork for what we see happening today. It was through those interactions mm -hmm. and those ambitions mm -hmm. that we elected the first Congressman, first black congressman after Reconstruction, mm -hmm. uh, Oscar de Priest, mm -hmm. or the John Jones mm -hmm. uh, was elected to the uh, state uh, county board of the state legislature. First to the county board and then the state legislature. State legislature. John mm -hmm. Jones in the 1860s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That continuum mm -hmm. came through the social climate okay. that existed in Chicago, and particularly on the South Side. Okay. Right. See, I don't want our re readers, our, our, our viewers, right. to believe that all of a sudden we just up we and started getting interested in politics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, wasn't, wasn't that it had a foundation mm -hmm. to build on? Because as those people were talking, the social talk, mm -hmm. they were also talking the political talk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason Dusabel High School came named the Dusabel because of the Charlemagne Rollins and mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, those people who, women who would meet. And when the new building was built, they demanded that it be named after the first non-native to settle in this area that mm -hmm. we now call Chicago. Mm -hmm. That was a political demand. Mm -hmm. And those downtown had to understand that political demand because at that time, in the consolidation and the segregation, blacks, outvoted percentage-wise the, uh, the uh, uh, immigrants mm -hmm. from Europe, percentage-wise. Mm -hmm. And so with that block of voting, mm -hmm. our uh, elected officials had to behave like we wanted them to behave, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they'd get fired. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't get elected again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Robert, you are, for a long time, you, I think you were co-founder, if not the founder of the Task Force Cat, for Black... Co-founder. Co-founder. Yeah. Task mm -hmm. Force for Black Political Empowerment. What was your aim when you got that organization up and running? Well, our major aim at that point was getting Harold Washington elected. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, out of that came a, a, a much broader perspective, because what we found out rather quickly was that not only did we have to get him elected, but we had to maintain a base so that he could stay in the office and remain uh, comfortable. And at the same time, we had to help channel the demands of the, the masses of yep. African Americans to him. Mm -hmm. Because, as you know, uh, every elected official, particularly black elected officials, sometimes have people around them that are not in tune with everything that's going on in, in the community. Mm -hmm. And, and a, an elected official can't know everything. He's mm -hmm. got to have differing opinions coming back and forth to him. And we serve that purpose. Yeah. So you can't just elect somebody <clears throat> and then go home. No, of course you have not. To, you have to stay somewhere in the vicinity so Absolutely. that your needs can be met or at least they can be known. Absolutely. Not just met and known, but demanded. Okay. Uh, and have uh, the potential. We put the rascals in, we mm -hmm. can take the rascals okay. out. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And they have to understand that. Mm -hmm. right. Right. The, the, and that's a power block that you don't want to use, right. but they know you can use. Mm -hmm. Is it still true as it once was that blacks it particularly in the city, had the balance of power that we could decide an election by simply choosing one candidate over the other one because mm -hmm. we had the numbers and we could tilt the scale. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. still true? That is because of the breakdown of the kinds of organizations, not, not that other, the lack of proliferation of those kind of uh, organization like Bob Starks and mm -hmm. his team put together mm -hmm. uh, and because of another a group coming in that we helped get to the point where they are politically mm -hmm. that is uh, the Latino mm -hmm. uh, that the force is and because many of our people at the top rung as Professor Starks has indicated have been uh, uh, drafted mm -hmm. into the conservative power structure. Mm -hmm. It leaves us less able to make the kinds of uh, victories mm -hmm. that we once could take for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember your days at uh, the Chicago League of Negro Voters and protests mm -hmm. at the polls. Yeah. I remember your association with Gus Savage and Lemuel Bentley and and um, Al Janney. Parks, Mr. Parks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those organizations, I think the Chicago League of Negro Voters was founded in the same way, mm -hmm. Bob, to, to elect exactly. the yeah. first citywide office, the office of city clerk. It, you know, we recognize. Lemuel Bentley. The, the, yeah, Lemuel Bent Bentley. Mm -hmm. And we actually racked up more votes than the major political party. We took, we, we racked up more votes than the Republican candidate. Mm -hmm. We didn't win the election, but we didn't expect to win the election. We expected to make the statement that we were no longer going to be satisfied with just trying to become the precinct captain, mm -hmm. you know, or just some minor, uh, you know, thing in, in our own communities. Mm -hmm. And that laid the groundwork, the citywide effort, mm -hmm. and put in the thoughts of people that we almost did it and we can do it right because that was symbol mm -hmm. of the possibilities mm -hmm. and of course at that time you were going against the grain That's right. mm -hmm. of the black elected elite mm -hmm. and uh, headed up at that time mm -hmm. by uh, Dawson mm -hmm. yep. Dawson was so entrenched in the Democratic Party machine until he resisted having this group of Tim Black and and, and uh, Bennett Johnson and mm -hmm. people like the Al Jenny, mm -hmm. they were considered radicals and mm -hmm. outside the pale mm -hmm. of, of politics. And uh, 
And that, that's the know. way they would get. That's the way we would get labeled. <laughs> well, we considered <laughs> ourselves Insinuate, insinuating, <laughs> right. like we were members of the of uh, the far left. Right. right. Say all we wanted to do was be good Americans. That's right. right. And we were we considered ourselves to be independents. Oh mm -hmm. yes, we, we were. We're not we're not owned by any party. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So exactly. we were likely to change our minds according to where we saw our best interests. Oh, absolutely. And I think Leon Dupre was regarded as almost honorary in terms of what the principles and the positions that he took on issues were the kinds of positions we wanted taken on issues. So it. It had that other flavor of we didn't vote for the candidate because the candidate was black. That's right. We mm -hmm. voted for the candidate because the c candidate respect, re represented and respected black people. Mm -hmm. And we voted down two black candidates that ran against Leon Dupree, mm -hmm. our votes in the, in the, in the, in the fifth ward. Mm -hmm. two, two candidates who came out of the machine mm -hmm. purposely. Another fact about uh, Leon, we, we would say, in kind of sarcastic way, there's only one black man in, in the city council, council and, and it was Leon Dupree. <laughs> He's a white man. Mm -hmm. And uh, at a conference when I was running for, at a press conference when I was running for the, uh, uh, against uh, Claude Holman mm -hmm. in 1963, which was again a test. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they were asking, why do you call them the Silent Six? And I said, uh, because they engaged in plantation politics. Mm -hmm. And that was the phrase that kind of got used that, probably yeah. across yes, the it country. Did. It's become a part of the political uh, lexicon. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the things that Bob Starks and that group did to help elect Harold mm -hmm. were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. They, I don't know whether Harold would have been welcome in the projects or not. <laughs> but they took him mm -hmm. right, there. Mm -hmm. And he was welcome because of the connections, right. Right. which Bob's organization, relatively the young The grassroots. Mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. They had been organizing mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the figures, see, Harold only won by 49,000 votes. That's right. Really? That's right. That close? Every time, even running against a Republican, mm. 49,000. It was that turnout. Mm -hmm. And the housing development mm -hmm. it created the massive difference. Right. right, and you can see now why it was important for a, 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 um, a Richard Daly when he came to office in in 1989 mm -hmm. to destroy the public housing. Mm -hmm. Okay, because he didn't want the ability of that kind of uprising mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So, and secondly, he changed the method by which. Uh, uh, mayors are elected mm -hmm. instead of the uh, you know a party election. It's now a nonpartisan election, so that anybody can run and he can he can uh, he can uh, hedge his bets and probably win as long as it's it's fixed the way it is. Mm -hmm. But remember, Harold did the in between. Mm -hmm. He had two whites and he ran between the two of them mm -hmm. in, a, in a primary. And once you won the primary in, mm -hmm. in Chicago, uh, the Democratic but Party. But the Democratic also, Party didn't really support Harold. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. But, but that, he, he understood that, 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 that there was really only one party in Chicago, and mm -hmm. that was the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And so uh, since Daley was running against Byrne, he ran the in-between. So Daley said, mm, I'll never let that happen again. Mm -hmm. So he went to the state legislature and changed from a party election of the mayor to a nonpartisan election. And that, that of course, uh, was done directly to, uh, to dilute the, the power of the African-American vote. So where do we have voter education so we can <laughs> learn these things? Because, you know, people who vote just think things, business continues as usual. Mm -hmm. We don't notice these things, that are, these changes that are being made that give advantages. We Certainly, uh, I think sometimes it may be brought to our attention that a line has been moved so that mm -hmm. you now are not in this ward, but you're in another ward. You know, that kind of gerrymandering you, you hear about, you know, where they deliberately uh, po position awards so that it can cannot cannot elect mm -hmm. cer a certain mm -hmm. candidate mm -hmm. because of the makeup of the ward, that kind of thing. The, the other thing he did, which I thought was rather rather slick on his part, 
was to change the way in which the composition of the Chicago School Board. Remember, we had we used to mount phenomenal uh, campaigns against the, the Chicago School Board mm -hmm. when it was a real school board. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it is run directly by the mayor from his office. Really? Uh, He's taking over. Totally controls it. Taking and over. that he did in 1989. He used the reform efforts that was begun by Harold Washington in, in 87 before he passed away <laughs> and used that as a wedge to change it to a total control by the mayor's office. And well, that's what he has now. As much, as many problems as we have had as a result of oh the boy. school situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in every respect and we have always been the majority mm -hmm. our students have been always been the majority of the students in the Chicago public schools why is it that we are not interested in 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 these kinds of things knowing <laughs> that we don't have a school board that ha ma that makes any decisions knowing that we don't actually exercise or exert any influence over Mm -hmm. The fate of our children sitting in the public schools. Mm -hmm. What is what is what, the reason? What, the, what about our aldermen? We still had a silent six. Well, <laughs> we still have they, it's, the numbers are bigger. The, the tone is the same. Okay. They're still more than silent in, in many ways because they can be obstructionist. Okay. In some ways, but the population of the school of the schools today is very much different than they were even two decades or three decades ago. Mm -hmm. Most of the people in your generations, their children either don't go to public schools or they go to specialized public schools. Charter or schools Peru, char char or academies uh, and all these fancy uh, names. Magnet schools. Magnet, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they go to the very selected. Fewer than somewhere around 2% of the teachers in Chicago public schools send their children to who have children eligible to Chicago public school. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's and the deplorable. Isn't that fine? So, so That's deplorable. That's so they, deplorable. They don't. Absolutely. Now uh, the other factor comes at the national level mm -hmm. where the president gets a bill or gets an edict or whatever it might be, leave no child behind. And the leave no child behind focuses almost completely on standardized tests. Mm -hmm. And black kids do not do well on standardized tests unless they're reared in an environment where the standardized test has evolved. Because standardized, te standardized tests are culturally biased. Absolutely. And, of course and they you, are that. You study that, did research on it, and actually came up with an alternate mm -hmm. test yourself mm -hmm. when you were at Northeastern. You right, know about right. that, of course. So, you know, that's a stacked deck. Mm -hmm. that, that's a stacked mm -hmm. deck intentionally stacked. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm because they want to say they're not smart enough mm -hmm. when they make application to the elite colleges and universities mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. And then their counselors do not guide them toward the two-year schools mm -hmm. or to your uh, Northeastern University right. Center for Inner City Studies. Mm -hmm. Right, precisely. And uh, or even Chicago State mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. Given the numbers, the volume, mm -hmm. those would be preparatory schools for the future in terms of, of, of the future of going. Another factor that came in with Harold, however, was not just the division between uh, uh, Daly and Byrne, was after Harold had defeated the, uh, Daly and Byrne, I mean, had won the primary, mm -hmm. a white Republican, mm -hmm. Bernie Epton, Bernie Epton ran against him, and he only won by about the same numbers, 49 or 50,000, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that he won in a democratic city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Race does matter. Right. Absolutely. But remember the, the, the mantra that was issued uh, on Mr. Epton's behalf by Mr. Vidoliak, before it's too late. Mm -hmm. That was a cold word. And mm -hmm. with his picture. Well, well, you know, to, uh, for me, Bernie Epton represented the Sar Sarah Palin yes. of today mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he was completely inept mm -hmm. and he could not put two sentences together that made any sense at all. But it was just the fact that there was a mouth that was moving mm -hmm. 
and a and, white face mm -hmm. that he, had people listening he to had him. He had quite a bit of money. He, he once uh, proposed buying uh, the White Sox. Now, I had his children at Hyde Park High School. Mm -hmm. They were bitterly angry at their dad, you know, because mm -hmm. of his, his position, because mm -hmm. they knew it was race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. bitterly angry at him mm -hmm. because, you know, Hyde Park kind of had a mixed population, and mm -hmm. except for the lower level. Mm -hmm. right. And he had represented a, par a part of Hyde Park in the state legislature, right? right? That's right. right? Mm -hmm. right. And he allowed but himself he to be, yeah, he was a Republican, and allowed himself to be used by the uh, by the the Vidoliacs and those people, and that the other thing about the school board, which which again I think uh, Tim and and of course the group uh, that 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 when Tim was in uh, working in the public schools understood explicitly was that the public schools were really in addition to being you know an educational institution, it was also a political football. And Absolutely. It was, thirdly, it was a place for employment. It was used as a place for employment, and Daly understood that explicitly mm -hmm. because he, he, you know, when he when he uh, changed, it, took over control of it. He then used it as a dumping ground mm -hmm. for all of his political cronies. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it became a contract uh, place where he could give contracts out mm -hmm. to all of his friends. And then, of course, with the, the so-called uh, local school councils, mm -hmm. he could hire and fire principals mm -hmm. at will, mm -hmm. when in fact, under the old system, it was a very difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he came in and, and, and took advantage of that reform movement that caught fire mm -hmm. in the 18, in, in, in 86, 87, and used it to his own advantage. I was appalled to learn that the teachers' strikes were not, in fact, teachers' strikes. That when teachers were out on strike, there were at least a dozen other unions who, if they did not agree to the terms of the settlement, the schools could not reopen. It didn't matter if teachers decided that they, you, they didn't <laughs> care about how much of a pay raise or they were willing to concede certain things and go back in because most teachers had the students' interest at heart. And they didn't really want to be on strike, and they certainly didn't want to be on strike any longer than it was absolutely necessary. But these other unions, when you talk about the, the political football, you had all these other unions mm -hmm. who had a vested interest in getting more for their union members. And consequently, if they would not come to the table in agreement, the teachers could not, and I said, why are they calling this mm -hmm. the teacher strike? Well, they because there are, are all 13 other unions who are right. sitting, who have to come to an agreement before the schools can be reopened. Well, they are part of the Chicago, what is the Chicago uh, Labor uh, Council? The Chicago Labor Council. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. which, which includes the, not only the teachers, but the... Um, uh, the the firemen, the, firemen, the, 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 the custodial some of those staff. would be selected to be on school board mm -hmm, mm -hmm, from those mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Now, mm -hmm. going back just a little bit, however, to, to your reference of the black vote being the balance of power, mm -hmm. it was the balance of power because at one time we voted some more independently. Mm -hmm. uh, but in 1936, when Dawson, who was a Republican, convinced his precinct captains and all, meeting at the old 8th Regiment Army. And he had been convinced by Kelly, of the Kelly Nash machine, mm -hmm. before Daly, to, in order to bring, to, to help Roosevelt win, mm -hmm. the, to, that they had to go to the Democratic Party. Now you got the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, Good New Deal mm -hmm. operating mm -hmm. in that. And so blacks went over to the Democratic Party mm -hmm. and have never returned never used the base of that power to make demands or uh, threats that mm -hmm. they could go to any party mm -hmm. and make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so we have been taken for granted by both parties. One party said, we're not going to get them. Other mm -hmm. parties say, we got them. So 36 was, by most political scientists, uh, is considered the year of the transfer from uh, loyalty to the Republican Party to the beginning of the changeover to uh, democratic uh, loyalty on the part of African American voters. See, if we had a switch, mm -hmm. if our base, if we had the kind of leadership, mm -hmm. is that this is where you got to go because mm -hmm. this is where you got to go because, mm -hmm. and give some concrete reasons, 
then both parties would have to have a great deal more respect and willingness to be more fair mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the black community, which cr created the wealth of this city, mm -hmm. the wealth of this nation. Mm -hmm. On our backs right. was built the right. wealth of this nation. But you brought up that magic word, leadership. <laughs> you know, leadership, where is it? Where has it been? We have, we have not, we have created the leaders. Mm -hmm. But then we have not made demands mm -hmm. that the leaders follow mm -hmm. the demands and needs of the community that elected them. Mm -hmm. So they feel free to bargain for themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the powers that have the uh, resources mm -hmm. to meet the unmet needs. Mm -hmm. And so once they're elected, their assumption is they're going to either vote for me or nobody. Mm -hmm. And so the options that used to exist Mm -hmm. of switching backward and forward mm -hmm. are no longer available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are we, why are we so prone to be loyal to people who clearly are not representing our, our interests? Because the, the major issues that come up in every election anywhere <laughs> has to do with better schools mm -hmm. and better mm -hmm. Uh, jobs and better mm -hmm. housing mm -hmm. and better, you know, you, they talk about the things that are nearest and dearest to people's hearts, the, the basic needs that people need to have met. And they make these promises, and yet the schools, the public schools continue to deteriorate, in my opinion. We yeah. do not do better in terms of employment. The, in, the unemployment rates continue to rise. So if we, if, if we keep electing people who keep making promises, that they are that they don't make is it our fault or theirs? If you the dog, dog bites you once, is this the dog's <laughs> fault? If he bites you see, twice, is yours? Yes. <laughs> see, once upon a time, much of our leadership uh, originated in our religious institutions. Okay. And and those religious institutions uh, existed as independents because they didn't need the outside mm -hmm. help. They the congregation. Mm -hmm. could, right? Uh, and uh, they were they were not they were educational they were not political mm -hmm. but politicians wanted them mm -hmm. all the way now those institutions have been in many cases taken over co-opted by the establishment mm -hmm. on the With basis the ham of and the turkey for Christmas and Thanksgiving <laughs> more but, than that for some but we no. have a new phenomenon uh, now it's the new black elite, uh, which is, is the post-civil rights leadership, right. which ha does not have the, the, the empathy, if you will, or not really the experience, because they, mm -hmm. don't, they don't understand. I mean, they didn't come through mm -hmm. the 1960s. And we've got to make sure that they understand where they came from, mm -hmm. how they got to where they are, Mm -hmm. uh, and that they can never forget that. And their obligation. And their obligation to, mm -hmm. to, to perpetuate that history mm -hmm. and those obligations. Mm -hmm. Because many of them, unfortunately, think that they just fell out of the sky mm -hmm. and uh, all whole and, and, and you know everything is mm -hmm. uh, fine and dandy. And even to the extent that some of our young people are now uh, calling this era a post-racial era which is just appalling. There's no such mm -hmm. thing. And yet when they get up into the structure, <clears throat> into the, they find that the treatment that they receive is similar to the treatment that their grandmas and grandpas mm -hmm. crowd about. Mm -hmm. But the rewards that they're getting mm -hmm. are for them so magnificent. Mm -hmm. And their indebtedness that they create Mm -hmm. keeps them from organizing with themselves as the old leadership would organize. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're isolated mm -hmm. in their potential to be leaders. Well, and it's maybe a post-racial era, but it's not a post-racist era. <laughs> right. uh, it, we still have racism, 
and Precisely. and uh, you know it's it it may be however subtle it may be however they they have something called low intensity aggression mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that you when you are being uh, victimized it is so subtle that you don't recognize it until it's too far late. too late for you <laughs> to unless you have experienced a remedy. it right. see and those right. in my generation regards to where they went they experienced mm -hmm. the racism mm -hmm. they had to come back to the community and cry on somebody's shoulder mm -hmm. these youngsters don't have any shoulders they feel like they can come back to well we don't have community tim that's the big point you see that sense of community mm -hmm. has been lost when we look at the going forward we look at the present presidential race mm -hmm. they don't say it but it is insinuated into the into the conversations or into the advertisements mm -hmm. insinuated into that race mm -hmm. that here is somebody who is not Caucasian running mm -hmm. for this big office. Mm -hmm. And the only reason is because he's pleading. Mm -hmm. They insinuate all that. So those who have been around a long time, we know it when it hits. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe the younger generation may not and then there's another part of our uh, yesterday I was talking with a young talking I was t you know riding with a young man trying to pick up my wife and I asked him I said now you I'm sure you're registered and you won't vote he said no I'm not registered <laughs> I'm not going to vote I said why not he said it doesn't make any difference <laughs> that's a good section of the population that's the population that Bob and them brought out mm -hmm. <laughs> you see Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference with this. <laughs> and then uh, Zenobi went on to tell him about South Africa. He said that it showed he wasn't uninformed. Mm -hmm. He went on to deal with the, in, the change from Mandela to Mbeki. Mm -hmm. And he knew something about the poverty level of those at the bottom who elected Mandela mm -hmm. and waited for hours. He knew that story. Mm -hmm. And they are down at the bottom mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. life has not improved mm -hmm. hard at all for most of them, mm -hmm. and so the crime is in mm -hmm. and the Joburg most, and all that. One of the most crime-ridden countries in the world, and as you said, Joburg is just and Cape Town are just mm -hmm. bereft with uh, bereft with crime, killings, murder, robbery, mm -hmm. the rape, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, you know, you can't poverty. allow anything that is 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 controlled. Or, or headed up by black people to succeed or else black people might get the idea mm -hmm. that they can control, that they can run something, mm -hmm. that they can succeed, that they can set goals and, and, and reach them. And it seems to me that the only arena in which uh, we, we get less interference, <coughs> uh, overt interference, is in the churches. You know, mm -hmm. now we can mm -hmm. build a mammoth church you know, we can we can do that, and we can put a school next door, and we can put some housing. You know, we can do a lot of but, stuff but, in that but, arena. But, but, but Dr. Pease, the kinds of churches that are the mammoth, big churches, the mega churches, are basically the um, the kinds of churches that preach um, economic prosperity mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. a civil rights kind mm -hmm. of gospel, mm -hmm. the kind that we used to hear on Sundays in the church in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. uh, that, the, most of the mega churches are people who, who preach uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's welcome, the, the, mm -hmm. the masses. I mean, the, the majority of, and, and of Americans love that because that doesn't really deal with any of the crucial problems that mm -hmm. we face. Mm -hmm. And it creates a fantasy. Of course. For them. Mm -hmm. Now and it feeds nothing. into capitalism, the whole yeah. notion. Yeah. Well, it, it gives you the idea that you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, yeah, you know, you right. get the whole Horatio right. Alger right. thing, right. you know, right. from rags to riches. Right. That's right. the theory theme that you can, and, uh, and uh, that, that they then sell on an individual basis, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. divides again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the group. Now, if you get a church like Reverend Jeremiah Wright, mm -hmm. where Many of those young people in that church have been out in the world. Mm -hmm. They're educated for the most part. Mm -hmm. And you get a minister like him who mm -hmm. is a militant. 
Now you have to just try to politically destroy that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. uh, Father Flager on the other mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. who does he has a different kind of congregation, mm -hmm. but preaches the same kind of sermons. Mm -hmm. You have to belittle those and mm -hmm. and keep the, the politicians aware if they're going to get elected and have the select position, mm -hmm. they better stay away from. But a TG. T.D. Jakes or, or, or a Crefro Dollar can be as prosperous as possible and have as many people because they don't threaten the system. Mm -hmm. That's my point. And they don't bring the culture no. into no. the building. No. You know, mm -hmm. we're not going to Africa. We're right. not interested yeah, in what's right. going on yeah, in Africa. Right. We're only that's interested right. in what's going on in our mm -hmm. own individual lives. Mm -hmm. And they're not mobilizing people the way Dr. King did, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to, to challenge the system in which people find themselves in. Mm -hmm. But Tim said a little bit ago that, you know, we are generating these leaders, that we're creating these leaders, the leaders are coming out of us. So have we changed? Are we sending forth leaders that are n no longer um, recognizable as having come from us? You know, we, we've got this long legacy of, of struggle and, and efforts to survive and, and overcoming and, and whatnot, and, and now we have people who have not had that experience, mm -hmm. and they uh, obviously don't think that experience has any value because they don't seem to relate to it in, they, in they any meaningful way. They reject that history, or they don't know that history. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know your history, the chances are you're going to repeat the negative aspects Mm -hmm. of that history. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening in the corporate world, even, mm -hmm. with the so-called people who thought they were different leaders. Mm -hmm. They were going to be examples of what you can be. Mm -hmm. They're the first ones being dumped in the capital, in the big world, mm -hmm. the 200000 and $300,000 a year world, mm -hmm. that gave them the impression that they could be billionaires. And you see on the television, you see billionaire Oprah Winfrey and mm -hmm. on and on. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can be like that because she looks like you. Mm -hmm. They hardly even know the history of Oprah Winfrey mm -hmm. and her struggle mm -hmm. in growing up. They just almost believe that she started where she is. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. They don't know the history of Michael Jordan mm -hmm. and the struggles in North Carolina that he made. It. They think he all of a sudden was uh, the where he was when mm -hmm. they saw him jump in the air and dunk, dunk a ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those are the fantasies that many of our younger people particularly, uh, either you find them giving up and saying, I'm not going to make it, like this young man said, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. who's in there. Mm -hmm. Or other young people, that people like Bob and I talk with, mm -hmm. who don't believe they're going to live very long. <laughs> so they have no feelings for it. And it takes the inspiration of the, the religious or the political or the social who can say, who, to you, if you just keep on, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But you owe it to the group. Mm -hmm. You owe it to the community of which you're a part. Mm -hmm. When you see your down the street neighbor, you say, thank you. Mm -hmm. We don't have the cohesion or the coherence in our communities mm -hmm. that existed even a generation ago. Mm -hmm. So the kind of base of power has to come from a charismatic self-sacrificing. Dr. King did not have to be out there getting bombed and shot at. Mm -hmm. He could have been the top of a corporation, mm -hmm. uh, the, anyone that he wanted. He could have been president of almost any university he wanted. They wanted mm -hmm. to get him out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but his commitment <coughs> was to the people. Mm -hmm. Now there are many of us at a lesser level mm -hmm who the system said, come on in here. Mm -hmm. Come on in here, and then you won't have to worry about anything. And someone said, uh-uh, I ain't going there. I remember <laughs> Richard J. did when they booed him off the stage. Mm -hmm. He sent, uh, the, he had the, 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 uh, the executive director of the Human Relations Council call me, because the, uh, the rumor was that it was done, what's his name, John, what's his name from out, out east, political science. It'll be in here in a couple of weeks. Oh, John Bracey. Yeah, John Bracey. <laughs> These guys that organized that mm -hmm. booing, mm -hmm. booed him off the stage. In Grand and Park. And, yeah, and booed, uh, and booed uh, 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 Jackson. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson. Off the yeah. stage. And so someone rumored that this was done because we had been treated in, in the election. He had this chairman, I mean, this guy that called me, the mayor wants to see you. I said, yeah. I said, tell him we'll be there. He said, no, the mayor wants to see you. I said, I told you to tell him we'll be there. I was not going to see the mayor by myself mm -hmm. <laughs> so that he could make the story. Now, there are others that we extol as so-called leaders mm -hmm. who did go to see the mayor by themselves mm -hmm. after they had organized mm -hmm. a group of people to go with them in two or three buses. Mm -hmm. They went up to see the mayor by himself. Mm -hmm. Out there, he could see the potential power base. Mm -hmm. In here, he could talk about, if you don't do anything with that power base, here's what you will get. Mm -hmm. And then you can measure it from where they were Mm -hmm. when they first went there to mm -hmm. where they may be where now. They I'm were. not going to name any names. You don't have to name <laughs> any names. You think but, I don't know our history. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem that we, and see, because we did no, not ever uh, have, we never did, it wasn't in our style to punish those who betrayed us. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. We will ro reward them, but don't punish them. And if you don't have those sanctions mm -hmm. that he or she understands, right. then they feel free because they can come on back to you and get pity once they're dumped, when they're no longer needed. Mm -hmm. That Very is not true, true in almost mm -hmm. any other community. Mm -hmm. That's true. Particularly the most dramatic would be the, 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 the most dramatic would be the, the Italian community. Yeah. Uh, they have sanctions. Right. <laughs> you know, I think it, we have to take off the gloves and we have to say that we know that electing a single individual to a single office, no matter how powerful and prestigious that office is, does not change the lot of the black community. It takes more than electing an individual right. to an office. Mm -hmm. For example, the presidency. The president is the president, the executive mm -hmm. part of the government. But there is the legislative mm -hmm. and the judicial. Amen. And we certainly ought to understand that when, when people stand before us and they say what they're going to do, we need to understand whether or not they can in fact do what they say they're going to do. We have a Senate and a House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. They allegedly make the laws. That is true. Allegedly yeah. there are lobbyists who are courting them all the time. With big bucks. Trying to make <laughs> certain that the laws they make don't affect the profits of these companies Precisely. the lobbyists work for. Precisely. So uh, the reality is that it takes more than just voting somebody into an office. Mm -hmm. It takes vigilance. It takes knowledge. You have to know. You have to, you have to not only investigate and research to find out what is going on, but you also have to be a part of some sort of organization mm -hmm. that can act not as your little individual self, but as the task force for, for black political empowerment that can mm -hmm. act, can find out what is going on, what is being proposed to go on, and can, tr to, can make the effort to run interference or set it aright if it goes off track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, 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 the naivete that, that the, the electorate, and I'm not just thinking of black people, the electorate has that, you know, you just elect this person as your senator, and as your whatever, <laughs> and this person is going to go in and change the whole thing. Nah. It wouldn't be a government right. if it was just all you needed to do was have one individual. You could just have one individual. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't need all these other people. So what, what, kind, what kinds of steps do we need to take? I'm, certainly we need some 
classes people need to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why why do we care about political empowerment anyway mm -hmm. do, what do we why your 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 young man said it doesn't make any difference one way or the other. Does it make a difference? Absolutely, because decisions about his life and where he is okay. are going to be made. What kind of decisions about his life? Well, everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Work opportunities. Mm -hmm. okay. He's working in a menial job mm -hmm. with his intelligence. I didn't find out how, where he went to school, but he certainly had information. Mm -hmm. uh, where he's going to live, mm -hmm. what kind of health care he's going to get, mm -hmm. if, if any. Mm -hmm. A kind of safety is going to be in the mm -hmm. community. Isn't it tragic to see what happened uh, in Inglewood, uh, the, the people in that family? Absolutely. What kind of uh, uh, I, 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 that that is unlikely to happen in almost mm -hmm. any other neighborhood. Right. Uh, and the people in the neighborhood said, "We heard the shots, but it wasn't nothing unusual." Mm -hmm. So we just thought it was, you know, some, some more of the gang activity. It had no idea. it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. The, guy, the mm -hmm. man said, we hear gunshots almost every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Every day. So police protection, we're oh, absolutely. wanting in, in, ter in those terms. Mm -hmm. So politics determines, what did Lou Palmer say, who gets what, what where, and when, how, and under how, what conditions. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So exactly. somebody mm -hmm. is deciding determining your destiny. Mm -hmm. Somebody's deciding your fate that you have never met and maybe mm -hmm. don't even know how they fit into the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. I, when I was active politically, I discovered that people didn't even know what a ward committeeman did. Precisely. They didn't know what an alderman did. They just mm -hmm. knew these people were, you know, they went to the city council and they made speeches. But they didn't really know what their, so they, if you had potholes in the street, or if you had absence of trees or diseased trees, you didn't know who to call. You didn't know about departments in the city, you know, sanitation and all of this. You, if you had snow up to your front porch, <laughs> you just had the snow. You didn't know that there was somebody whose case you were supposed to be on mm -hmm. to see that you got city services. Mm -hmm. See, now that's where the generational gap and lack of knowledge of political power comes. Because in my childhood, in the neighborhood where I grew up, those things were part of our daily. We'd have dinner or breakfast or whatever, and, and the mamas and daddies would begin to talk about what's happening in the neighborhood, the potholes, mm -hmm. the protection and all that. Mm -hmm. We children are listening. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get the job done? How do mm -hmm. you get the work done? Mm -hmm. uh, and even in the teenage years, we knew how to go put people back in who had been evicted from their houses. Right, right. <laughs> we, we, that was part of our social responsibility <laughs> to, to do and that. And we would notice when there were people working in our community and we had people who weren't. Exactly. You know, That's folks right. coming in in That's a truck, right. you know, they mm -hmm. digging stuff in the streets mm -hmm. and they doing all these things. Um, and we don't, but you know, daddy don't got have a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all, all that. So we and have school, to get involved. And the schools are not doing, and the public schools are not doing, preparing Right. E even the schools, the right. homes are different in many ways because, uh, again, days of my years, uh, 80 to 85 percent of all children under 19 lived in two-parent households. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't live in two-parent households, the neighborhood, you mm -hmm. see, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. That idea that she borrowed from mm -hmm. African culture. Mm -hmm. And brought uh, a book. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and that the children in the neighborhood belong to the neighbors to the neighbor. in the neighborhood. Right. Right. So there was a kind of a discipline. Now, after World War II. You got two minutes to go from after World War II to <laughs> Real quick, day. after World War II, the population changed. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the neighborhoods changed. The whole okay. culture changed, too. And the whole culture okay. changed. Yeah. So we got right. two wars. We've got our young men who are right. over there fighting to defend the country. Right. We have a, a very promising presidential candidate, ought we to be expecting something better than we saw after all the other wars and all the other elections? Do we have a right or is there something we need to do, Bob? I think we need to become even more active, even more vigilant. Uh, we need to be supportive on the one hand, but also demanding and vigilant on the other. 
as you stated earlier, it's not a time to vote and then go home and, and get under the covers. It's now time to become active. Because if indeed we are going to take advantage of the things that will be provided through a President Obama, we have to be organized to take advantage of those things. I'm sure he will have some programs that will be uh, beneficial to the African American community, but only if those groups in those communities are organized to take advantage of them. We know that the other communities are already organized and they are ready. And in fact, they've already put their demands on the table. Mm -hmm. We have not put our demands on the mm -hmm. table. Because we have no, we don't have the access mm -hmm. to <clears throat> others. When we look at the others and see what ethnic or racial groups they come from, they are usually selectees that come out of the political organization mm -hmm. that exists in Chicago, particularly Chicago mm -hmm. uh, represent. They come out of the organization or they have been the beneficiaries mm -hmm. of well, the struggles. We have got to change. Absolutely. We, better. we have Absolutely. got to change. Or else we're going to go down. You know, obviously if this is the change agent, if, if <laughs> now is the time for the change, we've got to change with the, the times. Time. Absolutely. And we've There's got to, no as you doubt. say, we've got to be organized and we've got to know what it is we want, want. and then we've got to demand it right. and be prepared to impose sanctions if we don't get what we mm -hmm. know we're entitled to and what mm -hmm. we need and deserve. And we know that some people are going to go in on individual agendas. Mm -hmm. but. We've got to have a group agenda, mm -hmm. a collective agenda that outweighs many of those little petty individual agendas. Mm -hmm. Because every president, every elected official, every leader is inundated by personal agendas mm -hmm. and people constantly banging, mm -hmm. forgive me this, give me that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as a group of people, we've got to have some collective uh, agenda that speaks to the crying needs of African Americans in this country and African people and the rest of the African diaspora. And we can justify that by saying that what's good for us is good for all Americans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are good Americans. Mm -hmm. We're not being anti-American. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be good Americans. Mm -hmm. And the person that I'm supporting is a good American. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if he is elected and acts like a good American, mm -hmm. it will be inclusive of all Americans mm -hmm. rather than selective and, and rejective, particularly of those who are responsible for helping initiate his rise to the top. <laughs> Thank you, Timuel Black. We're all going to vote on November 4th. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> regardless. I've already voted. What do you mean <laughs> on November 4th? Uh, if you wait until